that my idea is to uh, really specifically go after those kids because so much time those kids are really focused on one thing such as their sports, which I understand, but I want to give them other options. And I have a feeling that, you know, 100% of the kids we actually touch that have an interest in STEM and want to uh, go for it with STEM, 100% of those kids will get jobs. Whereas 100% of the kids, and I have taught basketball, I have coached basketball, I, I mentor a lot of women, and I have to say that, you know, again, negative percent of them actually go pro. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm betting on um, putting some pros <laughs> or sparking one or two interests um, of these pros that uh, for the future generation, because that's what it is. And what one thing I want to mention, black and brown. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, the focus of Beyond the Ball is ultimately to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And we do that by way of stories, strategies, and successes. So I'm, I'm excited for, for today's guest, as I'm, as I'm always excited, right? Because just having the opportunity to, to talk with people and hear them share their story and provide strategies so student athletes can really succeed and elevate to the next level. Uh, I think our guest today will definitely ha have some tidbits to really inspire the masses out there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring our guests out, right? I'm going to go ahead and bring our guests out. Um, and, and and today on Beyond the Ball, we we have none other than uh, Miss Nisha Butler. And just a little bit about her. She's, she's an entrepreneur. She has a passion for tech and she really has a heart uh, for really serving the youth and, and really just taking them to the next level. So without further ado, Miss Nisha Butler. Nisha, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Thank you, Jonathan, for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> definitely, definitely excited to have you on. I know we connected a while ago, um, right. but now, you know, finally able to make this thing happen. Right, so right, right. <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to kick it to you and I'm going to give you opportunity just to, you know, for those who, who might not uh, be familiar with you, just go ahead, take take a little bit of time and, you know, share a little bit about yourself with the people. No problem. <laughs> okay, well, I am a baller for life. I always say that um, just because I love basketball and it's given me so much. Um, I play professional basketball. I've played in uh, Europe. I played uh, with the New York Liberty. At least I got into the training camp. Um, I've been playing a while and then I retired and went into broadcasting. Uh, I Then now I'm into entrepreneurship. I started a couple companies. I do tech. And yes, you hit it on the ball that um, I have a passion for educating our youth and getting and getting more of them into STEM careers, such as myself. I'm a developer. Um, I've done a couple movies. I've done a couple sideline reports. Uh, you know, kind of done a bit of everything. Um, and right now, I'm settled on my new company, Ball and Technology, where we use sports themes and we teach kids uh, robotics and coding. So. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay. So how how did, how did you? find the passion for 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 technology because i know um just 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 based on all the things that are out there technology i think is one of those things to where like we see how exciting it is but sometimes we don't know like how to get into that field or so right. what, what, what was your first iteration with technology well i i went to private school in new york city um one of the best high school in the country i went to columbia prep um, for middle school and Riverdale Country School. And so I was one of the lucky ones that we got a computer course early. I think it was like early as the sixth grade, fifth, fifth or sixth grade. Um, so I, I got into computers early. I've always loved it. Um, and then I went to an engineering school. I went to Georgia Tech, um, which everybody forgets because we have been through a couple NCAAs, won a couple championships. It's an actual Institute of Technology. And when you think of Institute of Technology, think of MIT, which means that mm -hmm. everybody who goes there has to take a year of science, a year of computer science, and math for a year. So why that's different is that when you have when you have Bachelor of Arts or most other universities, um, you know, Duke, North Carolina, whatever, you don't have to take math, science, or computer science necessarily. So when I went back to graduate, I had a year of computer science left and I fell in love with it, you know, creating things, um, being a developer. I 
you know, black girls code. I, I love it. I'm a front end developer. And then I started my first company and I loved it because it's like you, you depend on yourself. You can make things work. You can tinker around stuff. Um, and then I noticed that there was a disparity of people, women, girls, uh, black boys and stuff that look like me that were in the rooms where I was doing it. And so I had a SWOT analysis done by my assistant. And, you know, as this was a few years ago. It doesn't take a rocket science to understand. First of all, America as a whole, we're behind. Like there's, mm -hmm. like, you know, a few thousand, like people, yes, there's a disparity in the black community. This is true. But these jobs are open and the majority of people in America are white. So in general, <laughs> we're lacking uh, computer skills to actually fulfill these jobs. But what I also noticed that of the jobs that are filled, um, there's a negative percent of women and uh, people of color that have the necessary skills to actually do it. And when it comes to technical jobs, you need technical skills. And like myself, I started early. So even though, you know, I played basketball and I went to reporting, I still had, you know, early development, whether it was confidence, whether it's thinking in sequential order and, and understanding, you know, object programming and all that kind of stuff. I kind of had a foundation, um, you know, by the time I got older to spark it, um, it was okay. Most of us do not. So I, uh, that's mm. what I plan to change. I think that, you know, if you're eight years old um, and you don't get CS courses, which the majority of schools do not have computer science or coding early. Um, of course, my private school did. Of course, some Catholics still do, but public schools, most do not. They have after school programs, which one of the things we're um, combating is either offering free or affordable um, STEM classes so that people, you know, can actually afford to at least, you know, expose their kid, you know what I mean, to one mm -hmm. or two uh, learning classes a month. And that's kind of like how I got into it. it you know, I, I, it's something that I, I love, like, it's, it's, it's awesome <laughs> to do. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So is it so is, is it STEM, is STEM something that that's more so recent to, to like to it? at least come to the forefront because I, I don't feel like I, I heard much about STEM. Um, like, you know, when I was going through high school or anything like that. So is, is this more of a, a, a recent phenomenon, if you will, or it's just the fact that it's getting no. more attention? No, I mean, well, there is a, you know, evolution of the personal computers. So that's, that's the first point, right? Okay. Um, but you, you have, if you, if, Quick history, which I don't know that much about, but I know enough to know. 80s, they had microprocessors. They had Intel, one of the biggest uh, company that that was 80s, 90s, where they were running things um, in competition with Japan. Um, and, and, and so this actually existed 80s, 90s. Now, our 80s and 90s, grew up in New York City, I know that my parents didn't hear about this, you know. Um, again, I happen to be lucky, but I understand your situation and so many other people's situation where it's not even people they're they're trying to get people to read in america on a certain level Let, like let's forget about science let's forget about coding we're mm. talking about bare minimum reading people can do the cool thing about coding mm. and stuff you don't need to know the alphabet and read a little bit to do it but um we have been behind um other nations in general as a whole uh but it hasn't been new. It's been around for a while now. Now, with Steve Jobs and Apple uh, and Microsoft, um, they helped have a personal computer, which meant that you, I mean, it was still, I think my first computer was in 90, I want to say 92 or 93. Mm -hmm. My mom got my first computer. And it was like, she had, I mean, it was like, I think $1,500. That was a lot of, well, it's still wow. a lot of money. It was a lot of money for my mother who was a secretary studying to go to nursing school um, mm. to get me. But she was like, my kid is going to have a computer. And that's like, like she, so she saved. So, I mean, I got a computer. Like, I think she started saving in like 90, 91, because she happened to see a clipping or something. I think it was, I want to say Bill Gates. She saw on TV or something. And she was like, dude, my, my daughter has to do it. And she started saving two years, like 50, we talked about $50. Wow. We're talking about $75. We're talking about, you know, my birthday came and she was like, okay, guys, you know, um, don't buy any shiny gifts, just whatever you can. Um, let me save for this. And I remember being in New York City, we went downtown and we had this big, <laughs> my mom had this big box because it was the big fat screen. And I think we put like <laughs> orange. 
Um, and it was really awesome because I was able to know computers, but that's not, I was lucky. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, I, and I realized that I was lucky. That is the reason why I, I would have got my way to, because it has nothing to do with skill set or ability. It's just exposure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we have to combat as a whole, as a country. So what? So what's the goal with with this program? That well, what, what's the goal with, with with your nonprofit? Because I've seen that you I've seen you do multiple programs. But what what's the goal? Like you look back five years from now, ten years from now, what do you want to see accomplished throughout the course of your nonprofit and just in regards to you know educating the youth? Yeah, well, I have a passion clearly for athletes, right? Um, so our niche, we want all kids, right? <laughs> we want all kids. Um, that don't have access, that are in underserved areas, to be exposed. We have a STEM initiative that um, we adopt their hood. Like I reach out to friends of mine and athletes that they adopt a hood. We have um, big tickets adopting his hood of Co-op City, the Bronx. 100 black men is adopting their hood. And they actually have one of eight areas of the highest recidivism rate in the country. Um, Ron Artest is about, uh, adopting his hood mm. in uh, Queensbridge. So we have people that care about these kids, um, that are able to equip them. And my goal, um, essentially, if you think about this for a moment, if you think about all, there's about roughly 40 million kids across America that play sports, right? So 40 million from whatever. Right. Of that 40 million, maybe 0.001% of them, it's, it's a rare number, a small number, a fraction of a number, that actually is gonna be a LeBron James. Right. Um, I want to use sports principles, sports themes to get because athletics is a is a sport. It's a smart sport. Um, and what I mean by smart sport is an actual intelligence. Like people think dumb jocks. You have to read plays. You have to have innate ability. You have to understand. You have to remember plays. You have to um, understand how your, your brain synapses. When you look at a play, it happens so quickly, so fast. I believe. Um, that sports is intelligence and, and it teaches you teamwork, um, uh, dedication, focus, uh, multitasking, discipline, so much things that it can help you uh, master career in STEM that my idea is to uh, really specifically go after those kids because so much time those kids are really focused on one thing such as their sports, which I understand, but I want to give them other options. And I have a feeling that you know, 100% of the kids we actually touch that have an interest in STEM and want to uh, go for it with STEM, 100% of those kids will get jobs. Whereas 100% of the kids, and I have taught basketball, I have coached basketball, I, I mentor a lot of women. And I have to say that, you know, again, negative percent of them actually go pro. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm betting on um, putting some pros <laughs> or sparking one or two interests um, of these pros that uh, for the future generation, because that's what it is. And what, one thing I want to mention, black and brown people um, are the majority of the menial labor force that will be extinct in the next 10 to 20 years. So people are not understanding that. Like their jobs, now I don't, I believe in automation. I'm a capitalist. I, except for education and uh, healthcare. But anyway, um, I believe in innovation. I believe in technology, all right? But we have to understand that there are certain jobs that the majority of the minorities in this country occupied will no longer exist. So what are you gonna do with that? So, and these, and this is when I, when I say no, there's this, it's, these are like, um, they're, they're jobs of integrity. They're, they're jobs that people, you know, put food, whatever they have to do, but they will no longer exist. So what are we going to do with that workforce? What are we going to do um, with those thousands? I'm not really sure if they're millions, but that's a lot of people that are going to be displaced, especially women, uh, especially black women. Um, so, you know, it's it's interesting. And black women are the most educated group in, in the country. I would like to add that. But we also occupy a lot of these jobs. So that's my, my goal is to educate these people to uh, have more options when they are displaced. A hundred percent. So a hundred percent are 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 put in a position to where they have jobs. Think about it. Yeah, like, like, I mean, yeah, I, I, I love it. I love it. You know, my kids, like, I I love these. I really get these really good kids. They crack me up. But 
I've also coached and I can say, and I, I was a good basketball coach. I can coach some kids. I can share my knowledge. I put up some buckets in New York. I know how to coach a kid. Nobody that I've coached that have paid me to coach them, their parents have went pro. And I guarantee any of the kids that I spark their minds or contribute or a little bit, like, like have a little bit of an impact. Any of them that decide that when I ask the kids, what do you want to be? If any one of them say, I want to be a developer, I want to be a graphic designer, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a scientist, I want to be a doctor, whatever they decide to choose, they will be employed. <laughs> and mm. that's the goal. That's, that's what I want people and parents to understand that, you know, this is 100%. Like, I, you know what? I, I'll bet my money on it. I bet you a dollar's 100%. And you know what? I If I lose, it'll be like 99.9. .9. You know what I mean? And that one guy didn't work it out. But this is what we're talking about. Yeah, this is, this is what we're talking. And I hate to say, I, I can ball. I used to play. Like, I was literally, like, nice. So I understand when athletes feel like, oh, do I need to have a plan B? And that, that ruins your confidence. It ruins your swag. I get it. Because I didn't even think about that. But, <laughs> you know, let's look at the 0.0001. So the percent goes like this. 0.08 of 40 million actually go and get a college scholarship. Like that is really low. Of the wow. 0.08, 0.018 or something more or less like that, go to play pro. You know what I mean? So everybody's talking about Kwame Brown. He is a part of the Lucky Sperm Club. He's yeah. a point. He's a point all oh, one. I was looking at, I was hearing that. I was like, how? How are you calling this man a bus? How? Like, he makes millions of dollars, which anybody who's talking about him, the average salary in America is $45,000. This mm. is the average salary. And this man made millions, plays in the air for what? Like, anyway, I digress. But this is my point. And this is my passion. This is This is it. So. Yeah, I, I I love it. I, I mean, I, I I love the passion and and even hearing you say a hundred percent and hearing how confident you are in saying it. Oh yeah. I I believe it. I believe it will and it can come to fruition. Um, but the thing that really sticks out to me is just like you said, you can ball because I, I I did did a little bit of research. I saw the stats and you know mm -hmm. I saw I saw how many three thousand. Yeah, so one hundred and twenty seven yeah. points in high school. Yeah, and missed the first ten games. Yeah. I, I like the ball. I like to shoot a lot. <laughs> but 3,000 point and you missed 10 games? Yeah, I got hurt my senior year. So I tore my, is it, but, but, is that MC or PCL? I forget. Which one of those? My senior year, I missed my first 10 games and I was out. And uh, my dad, no, the reason why I know, my dad, like, you could have scored more. And I'm like, here we go. But uh, yeah, I missed my first 10 games and, you know, it happened. But I still, I still got the record for women, so. That's good. <laughs> so, so if so if if you can remember going back, like going back, rewinding, just just to play a trip down memory lane, right. when, when you had the injury, and mm. and you knew that you can ball, and you knew that you were nice, and you had the injury, like what was going through your mind then? Like, is it a what am I gonna do now type situation, or is it just not, no, no, no? I I've never, I mean, for me. You know, I've always had a different path because, again, I, w I went to private school. I didn't go to, like, my my parents picked the school based on education. Mm. And my parents, you know, my dad um, became a pharmacist. My mom became a nurse. It, I, it wasn't a pressure on me to support my family, right? Like, like it was, yeah. I didn't have that. Um, I didn't have that. My parents were like, look, you know, you got to be educated and you got to, um, you know, uh, add to society and, and make us proud type of thing. It wasn't like, you know, uh, we're destitute. You got to get us out of poverty, which is, you know, some people have, that's their option. So mm -hmm. when I got there, it was an internal struggle um, just because I was so good. I was like, oh my gosh, how do I get hurt? But you start to, it's more, it, it for me, it was more like, like, it was, well, no, because I broke my ankle at 12. So it was like, man, rehab is going to be, it's going to suck. <laughs> that's what it was. Like, my coaches didn't renege any of my scholarships. Like, that wasn't an issue. It was just rehab is a problem. But I would like to say that I am a capitalist, and I said I'm not a capitalist when it came to healthcare and education because we didn't have um, the, uh, the health insurance that they took for me to rehab in order for me to get back to where I needed to be. And it was mm -hmm. a team 
father that stepped in, who was the uh, the doctors for the Rangers, and who played on my basketball team, and was like, no, you can rehab. But uh, well, I hate to say it. we did have insurance, but they sent me to this rehab place that our, my parents' insurance covered, which was like not you know those fancy smancy ones. And um, but I should have gotten access to the best rehab that uh was available because why not um so you know i remember that shout out to dr nissenson for that because yeah i i got to rehab my knee with the new york rangers um office and i got you know i was perfect by the time i you know finished the rest of the season but yeah there's a disparity in healthcare, like we already know but <laughs> yeah i didn't have those issues like that other people do you know thank god, thank god. yeah yeah, I mean that's super cool. Everybody can't. Everybody didn't have that story to do to get the dude. This is my point. This is this is this is <laughs> this is my point. You know what I mean? Like I'm fully aware of the blessings and the luck, you know, that I've had, and and this is why I'm, you know, I mean, he was a doctor. He was a surgeon, um, a, a doctor of the New York Rangers. That's just not the science career, and he was able to say, no, 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 you can come over here because of a science career. Right. <laughs> that was a doctor. That was Dr. Nissenson. Um, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like this is this is what we're talking about. There wasn't this is the kind of impact that anybody um can 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 work, uh, go to school. You gotta put in the work, no matter what color you're gonna put in the work to do it. But you're gonna I'm telling you right now, you put in the work. Um, and I feel like we have a background in sports. That would be perfect person. Um, to be a, a surgeon because you know, you know what you go through. Like if I went to be a doctor, I, I get queasy about blood. So that wasn't my testimony, but dude, we got to get more black surgeons in there. We got to get more black doctors. Like, come on and like, let's go. <laughs> let's yeah. do these kids. If they're listening, come on kids. Yeah. So, it, so exposure opportunity and you know just 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 for, well exposure opportunity and just like you said you got to put in the work you got to put in the work so sure. so so thinking about exposure when did you get exposed to to acting when when did this come when did this come about how did this come about yeah well, my mom i have to you know my mom recently passed away and um she my parents how they raised me um again since we have that pressure it was more quality time with my parents and my mom loved movies and like my dad was a sports guy my mom was modeling acting so it was just you know she and i would go uh hb studios meisner studios and uh we would take acting she would take she would take me my acting courses um since i was young and um that was our thing we would go to a movie you know uh they they monitored what I saw, the funny thought is, I, it wasn't weird for me to see um, black actors because that's all my parents allowed me to see. Like it was like <laughs> the, the Cosby Show, A Different World, you know, um, any any kind of black movie that didn't have like guns or whatever, I saw, and that was it. I couldn't watch TV, um, so I we watched movies because my parents believed, and I'm saying this because I think it actually helped. Uh, my parents thought that television. Uh, breaks the kid's concentration because you know this like I think what 15 minutes or maybe 10 I'm not sure and then there's a commercial and that commercial lasts 30 seconds and then there's another commercial and then it's like you know other so my parents thought that movies taught my brain to focus for two hours focus mm -hmm. for um and um I don't know where they got that from but I actually it worked because I'm able to focus um my my concentration when I want it to uh, and I had, yeah, I was hyperactive kid. So they had to do a lot of things to keep me focused on acting, um, focused on anything and acting, you know, those classes like one or two hours and you get to speak and, you know, you get to shine. And we did dance together, a, a Broadway dance center. I did ballet. Uh, she was into gymnastics. And the funny story was I loved gymnastics. I love, there was a girl, Dominique Dodd. I loved gymnastics. And then I grew five or six inches one summer and um my gymnastic coach was like mm. <laughs> i don't i don't know i don't know my mom's name is alice i don't know alice because i i was all here i was 411 for years and one summer i jumped to like five seven or something and they were like mm. <laughs> that was my heartbreak that was my heartbreak to this day i love gymnastics but anyway oh. that was our time with my mother 
Mm, wow, I, I love that. I, I really, yeah. I really love that. I love that. So, so today, what, what's, what's been the most? I, I guess what, what's been your favorite role that you've played, or what, what's been, you know, one, one of those, one of those things where it's just like this will always be remembered. Well, for my me. favorite role I didn't play is probably a better question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I again, acting like my love was always sports and technology and I like acting because I love movies and I'm able to, um, you know, I, I studied with really great teachers, Ivana Chubbuck in, in LA. Um, I got to build a master's course in New York, um, HP Studios in New York. I, you know, I love Spike Lee and his movies. So I, I know I can act, um, but you know, it, it, it's, it's something I always would start to do something. So um, I did, starting a role opposite Adrian Grenier. And I think that was my favorite because I got to kiss him and he's super hot. <laughs> Not just joking. Not really. But no, um, that was fun because my girls were like, dude, that's the guy from Entourage. I'm like, yeah, he's my boyfriend. I'm just on set now. But I was always just, you know, having fun is that I never really, you know, it was just one of those things. The LeBron James commercial was really fun because I got to meet LeBron James. He's super cool. Him, Mav, like that whole team is just they're super dope kids. Uh, they're men now. Um, you know, but the role I guess I I I, I love and one of my favorite movies love basketball. And that's like one of the things that and now I'm glad we had this interview today because today marks um athletes, student athletes being paid on the image and likeness today. So I'm not clapping for the NCAA. I'm clapping for the athletes. Like that's the first step um, to them getting adequately compensated or even not like, let, let's just give them some money in addition to that. You know what I mean? So the NCAA is like, we're still not going to pay you, but you know, if you want to get paid, <laughs> no, pay the athletes too. pay them a percentage of your revenues per year, a nonprofit making billions of dollars off the backs of these athletes deserve a percentage of the profit for some kind of fun for these kids, mm. plain and simple. You know, and this is my this is my thing. I don't know why they need some kind of they need a SAG union. The SAG president of the union of kids needs to go and start a union for these kids. A percentage of of all uh, revenues from a nonprofit. How is the NCAA not profit? Anyway, should go to these kids. This period. is true. So yeah, this anyway, is, my feeling. <laughs> this is very true. <sighs> So, so for, and, and I'm not, I'm not trying to rub on the wound. I just want to rewind it back a little bit. I just want to rewind it back a little bit, but just to see now how iconic love and basketball is. I knew then, by the way, the script was amazing. Oh, really? So you, so you could just tell when you read it, you just knew that this was, this was going to be course. one of those movies. Of course. Like, first of all, it never it'd been written before. And um, it's not a wound, by the way, um, because, you know, I live enough life to know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And although I, it's one of my favorite movies, like, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a very good job. And the writer, Gina Prince Spiderwood, is so talented. She's an athlete herself. She ran track. So when I read the script, I was like, yeah, you know this girl, you know what I mean? And when Spike... Um, uh put me up for the role um he was he wasn't a producer or anything i think he is a consultant or whatever he's like hey you need to talk to this girl he showed her my clips and she's like yeah because she was a track runner um so you knew then you know it, this is it's just my parents again my walk was education you know what i'm saying so i'm sitting to you i'm sitting with you here talking about tech technology because i'm a technologist i'm an entrepreneur like that's that's you know i can't worry about what other people think uh, I should have did or what other people would have chosen to do based on their love capabilities or passions, right? Like that, that ain't my issue. You know, my, you know, not everybody, not many actors can write a line of code, right? Like not many actors can sit and like, I'm not worried about that. I, you know, I think that, yeah, what, for me, what's the problem was that I was a kid that couldn't take advantage of an opportunity that was presented to me, um, given the platform that I was. Now, this is the issue I have. Mm. You know, this, the issue is not necessarily okay. Let me, like, listen, we've had we've heard tragic stories by actors and all that kind of stuff, and what fame can do. I, I'm really not worried about that. It's the fact that it was 
forbidden, prevent it for me to do it or have the option as an experience in life, right? Like whether I would have been an actor, no, no, I doubt it because that's whatever. But why not be on the set? Get cool. Like I can play ball. I can act. Why? Why prohibit me from an opportunity? Is the issue that I have with Love and Basketball. Love and Basketball is a great movie. You knew it. This is this is. I wasn't like, oh, really? No. It, it, come on. Like the the soundtrack was cool. The people were cool. I mean, no. It was the issue that I have with it. That's why I'm so happy about this now because it's a first step, you know, in, into a lot of different things. So that's how that's how I really feel about it. <laughs> well, that's, well, I think that's very, very mature and very, very dope of you. And even to have that perspective, you know, because thinking about it, just like you said, if if we remove everything else from it, this this is an experience like that everybody yeah. doesn't get every day to you know act in a movie and you know different yeah. things like that. So I, I think I think that's I think yeah, I've been on, I've acted in movies. I understand that. What what's tragedy is losing my mom. You understand? Like this, this is, that's a life event that will forever change me and uh, will hurt my heart. That's, I, I'm not sure if, if I'm not sure if the word wound could, could properly define that. You see, what I mean? like, like, like when you put it in perspective that everybody has a story, everybody has bumps in, a, in the life. That was a bump in my life. That was by no means a tragedy. <laughs> you know, like, 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 what like people are getting shot jogging or chokes mm. chilling on the corner um you know i'm getting rehab by the doctor of the rangers i'm you know taking trips around the world teaching my thing i understand how to start a business i know technology like like i love the movies i get to see it i you know like gina i was on set with like i you know, like th this is this is me though. Like again, I understand other people's um, walk in life and other people's opinions. Um, but I, you know, I lived a little of life, and I understand the difference between a bump and a tragedy. You know, that's how I feel. So, <laughs> how, how did how did you develop that? Like, how how did when when did when did this start coming full circle for you? Because I I don't think that that's. Um, I'm I'm not gonna say I don't think that it's common, but j just to just to hear your perspective and just to hear you just talking through this, when when did when? Well, I think that it goes down to my parents. I have you know I feel like as an adult now, you know they used to drive me crazy when I was younger, but <laughs> as an adult now, um, and I lived a little bit of world, and just just think about this way. Look at social media. You know, you have people, you have women doing all kinds of things to look like an image that's filtered, um, <laughs> that's not even realistic for their body to, to exist and to procreate, whatever it is. And I'm not judging anybody do your thing, girl. I'm, I don't care. But here's my issue. Like, I, I'm a mentor. I talk to people. You know, I've lived on an island. I've lived in different places. I'm from Aruba uh, in Puerto Rico. I lived on Aruba where, you know, it's, it, it, you have a life that is happiness and it exists of finding a, a light inside yourself that exudes wherever you are, not based on necessarily what you do, but what you contribute, right? Like, I feel like my perspective, I understand sometimes I feel I'm so normal. Most people think I'm abnormal, but I do believe, and by no means am I perfect and I have my struggles and my issues and my bumps. But I feel like to be happy, to be peaceful, you know, to, to live life and, and not be so stressed out is to really enjoy the stuff that you do and make your own decision. Because if you start like living your life for other people, then you become something that you're not anyway, and you're going to be unhappy. So, <laughs> you know, I love what I'm doing. Like, and it's, and, it, and you know, even in this love, starting a business oh my goodness i'm stressed like these kids crack me up but they stress like this is not like you know funny to put but i think an inner peace and understanding and we're all trying to figure it out right like we're all trying to figure this road of life out and i feel like the road that i can look back when you see a person that you love so much um like my mother um uh pass away at the age of 50 and be in a hospital 
about to pray, uh, approach her 50th birthday, and she gives you a grace through going through something that she doesn't get upset with God about. She's not angry. Like, like I was, I was, well, I was angry, but I was almost at a point that I could have been really angry, but how could I be angry when the person that's going through it is setting a standard of grace Mm. and of peace that that's an interesting, listen, like, you know, and I'm not getting too deep or savvy, but it's an interesting thing when you're not so self-absorbed that you miss that, you know, uh, my mom said something to me that I couldn't, you know, she said a lot, but, you know, she's like, this is the circle of life. Would have been a tragedy if something would have happened to you or something. Because at one point I was like, man, I loved her so much. I was like, mom, what happened to me? And she's like, no, 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 darling. No, 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 no. That's not how God wants it. No, no, no. Like, she, I'm not saying she welcomed, you know, she wanted to live. My mom was so full of life and energy. But she made a choice right? And she showed me. So when you ask me how I got, I mean, that's something that, you know, you have to experience and you, you have to go through. And, it, and it, it's something that I will never, I mean, yeah, my life changed. I grew up real quick, you know, when my mom got sick and ultimately passed away. So yeah, that's how I look at life. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so, sounds like she, she, she's a phenomenal woman and so, yeah. sounds like she, she definitely, uh, she definitely lives on within you. This is this is my I I got this. this is my this is my mom she had me look at that uh, <laughs> like how we just found this it's like I, like we just found this this is what made it to, like I I my dad just had that and he's like look mm. at what I but yeah beautiful woman beautiful soul I, I I just pray that when I see her again that she's proud of what I've you know accomplished and what she's instilled in that that's it I just want to make my parents be like all right all right we did a good job. <laughs> oh man I, I i love it and i i really appreciated our, our conversation they really enjoyed the conversation yeah, sure. uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna take a we're gonna take a slight pivot here we're gonna take a slight pivot basketball right. player you know top top scorer in new york we're gonna take a pivot yeah <laughs> okay I, I was doing the, i was doing a little jab step but um so so now we're gonna dive into the two minute drill all right and uh, the two-minute drill, if people are listening for the first time and, and for you as well, Nisha, the two-minute drill is where I'm going to ask you a few rapid-fire questions. And then from there, uh, just going to have a little bit of fun. And then I'm going to, you know, send you on your way. So are okay. you ready? Let's go. Bring it. All right. And here we go. Favorite food? Thai. Mm, okay. Okay. What, what's the last book you read? Um, I'm reading uh, this manager by the Intel uh, chief that just died. I think I think it's like, uh, it's a it's a manager jurio book, and I'm I'm reading too, I'm reading that one uh, which I went and I just uh, I'm like chapter seven on President Barack Obama's latest book. Interesting. People need to read that. It gives you a different perspective. His second book versus his first one, which I read too. But anyway. mm, okay, okay. What what's what's the most underrated cereal? Cereal underrated. Cookie Crisp, so mm. food It's cookies. I know it's ridiculous. It's cookies in the morning. Cookie Crisp is the bomb. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. What, what, what's your what's your go to streaming show of preference? Um, I'm a I record all the shows because I work, and I I really like John Oliver. Homeboy is hilarious. Yo, know, it's a, it's last week tonight with John Oliver. Hilarious. Okay. Him and Trevor Noah, I miss John Stewart, but him and Trevor Noah, those are those are my guys that I, I record. But yeah, he's hilarious. This English guy is just okay. great company. He's funny. Okay. <laughs> and then what what's what's one tip you wanna to give to a student athlete? One tip? Um well if it's sport wise, focus, right? Like focus. Um, have fun, not too much fun, because you'll have. It's better to have fun as an adult, I think, than kids. Um, but focus. Um, as far as life is, I think you know. I think sometimes student athletes are expected to be adults way faster than anybody else. Like everybody, all of my friends went to college to find themselves and to have fun and party and to learn and to not really know what they want to do in the beginning and figure it out. Student athletes are expected to like know everything and 
you know, be focused. No, and enjoy being, you're still a kid. So take those classes that you have an interest in, not necessarily because, you know, to, I know there's like certain things you can't take or whatever because of season. Take them off season, read a book, like really read it, learn a, a little bit because I understand you're trying to survive. You're trying to make it to practice. You're trying to make it through the season. I get it. But you know what? Honestly, chill out a little bit. You, you know, read something, um, have a, a hobby outside and there's no time for that. So I know they're gonna be like, wait, did you play? Yes, I know what I'm talking about. I did play, but take take some time. You know, I, I played the flute, I played chess. Like it, it helped me deal with a lot of um, stress. And I feel like, unfortunately, these kids are like cattle and they don't have the time. They turn around and their best years when they were supposed to make mistakes in college, supposed to figure it out in college with that security, they didn't. And then they get out and that's the real world. You know, then they're trying to you know do the career where you, they, they really should have developed more of who they were, not what they do or what they want to do in college. So I don't know if they understand that because they're still kids, but take the time to, to figure out who you are, you know, I think. Certainly. And then last question, bonus question, then we're out of here. Who would you like to see me interview on Beyond the Ball next? So you focus on student athletes. Um, I mean, I hope you get to the big whoever wins the championship because they were once a student athlete. So uh, let's see. I mean, I like Trey Young right now. That's my dude. Uh, like I can't believe he's he's lining up. So all right, professional athlete Trey Young because he would just be so much fun, and or maybe his parents because I saw maybe you reach out to Trey Young's dad because he actually um, did an interview with Trey Young where he was teaching Trey Young about financial um, freedom and literacy at an early age together because he actually actually Trey Young's dad was a former student athlete. Um, so he played ball himself. Um, I think that might be, and he's, you know, old school, he's kind of whatever, but I think that would be a cool thing. Like check out what pops is doing, you know, okay. I, I think good. different, but good. Okay. Yeah. I, I might, I might see, uh, see about reaching out or, or unless you got the plug, let me, let me know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see what you can do. I see what you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Nisha, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us. And if you could just now just let people know where they can find you, follow you, connect with you, uh, just to, you know, continue to follow the great work that you're doing. Yeah, um, Nisha Butler, pretty simple. Um, N-I-E-S-H-A-B-U-T-L-E-R. My company name is Ball and Tech. Uh, Bell and Technology, at Ball and Technology. So, yeah, I'm... I'm trying to do better social media guys, but yeah, you know, tag me right now. I try to get back to you, but I got to do better than that. But yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook or LinkedIn. So there it is. There it is. Well, Nisha, thank you so much for, for hanging out uh, yeah. with us today and, and, and sharing your story with, with the ballers. And like I said, I feel like it's really going to gonna definitely inspire some people. So thank awesome. you. And, and thank you for, for all the work that, that you do. Awesome. No problem. Excellent. No problem. Excellent. To all the ballers out there, all the ballers, if you have not connected with Nisha, I would encourage you to definitely go find her on Instagram, go find her on Facebook, on LinkedIn, whatever platform is most comfortable for you. So definitely find her there. I would also encourage you all to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube. Just type in Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones and then we'll pop up. But I'm Jonathan Jones. And this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.